people this is radio TV phono nut and today we don't have a radio we don't have a TV and we don't have a phonograph we do have a nut which would be yours truly but as far as the item we'll be examining today we have a Syncor Super Mac model CR31A CRT tester and rejuvenator these were mainly used by TV repairmen to test and rejuvenate the picture tubes and television receivers. This was brought to me by someone a while back that wants me to check it out and make sure it's in proper operating condition. I uh, really doubt there's much wrong with this. These are usually reliable pieces of equipment, but I'll open it up and clean the controls and switches and then we'll eyeball the components and make sure nothing's obviously wrong and then we'll test some picture tubes with it and make sure it's okay. Here's the inside. As you can tell quite a bit of circuitry here but nothing looks to be physically blown up and it looks like this unit's from 79 if I'm reading the date code on the meter correctly. So I'll just clean all the switches and controls and then we'll test it out. Okay, we'll now attempt to test the picture tube in my bench TV, which is a Type 12 VBN P4. We set the filament to 11 volts, bias to C, and we use socket 5. And these other figures tell you what anode and focus voltage to expect. So we'll power it up. Set this to 11 volts. Filament adjust. Okay, there we are at 11 volts. Want the gun selector in the red, black, and white position. Test for HK shorts. That's good. Test for G1 shorts. That's good. Gun balance. I forgot to rotate this bias knob to C. Duh. I'll admit I've never used this particular tester before. I've always used the B and K models, but it's pretty self-explanatory. And I think we rotate this red cutoff to where it Yep, right there we rotate the red cutoff knob to where the meter reads on the cutoff mark. Now we'll read emission. And that tube is very strong. That's good. So, so far, so good. Now let me try to find a color tube and make sure that the green and blue works as it should. And next we have an early 80's GE 10 inch color set. This is the model that replaced the tube type porter colors. I pulled this one down here because A, it was easiest to get to out of all the TVs that are over here. And I know the tube in this one's good, so let's test it and see if it indeed checks good. Okay, this is a 10 VAHP22 filament set to 6.3 volts, bias to D, and we use socket 15. So we have the filament set to 6, we'll set our bias to D, turn our gun balance controls all the way down, see if we have socket 15 here, and we do, this one right here. Then we plug our cable onto the test socket. Plug the socket onto the CRT. Switch on the power. And set our uh, element to exactly 6.3 volts using this fine adjust knob here. 
Okay, we have this set to filament set. We have this on 6. We have this adjusted for 6.3 volts. And as you can see, the tube is lighting up. Now let's test for HK short. That's good. Red gun's good. Green gun. And blue gun. That's good. Now we go to G1 short. Blue gun is good. Green gun is good. As is the red gun. Now we go to gun balance. Red gun. Set the red to, to where the needle reads right there on the cutoff mark. Go to read emission and that's very good. Now we'll repeat the same procedure for the green. That's good. And the same thing for the blue. Test emission, and that's good. This tube is very strong, which I knew it was. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this CRT tester seems to be working as it should. This also has a rejuvenate function that you use by flipping this rocker switch over to the right, but I don't have any CRTs that I feel comfortable with rejuvenating. And really, rejuvenation should only be used as a last resort anyway, because it can actually make the tube worse than it was to start with. So, only use it on sets that the tube is absolutely no longer usable in. And when you rejuvenate a tube, you want to use the lowest setting possible to get the job done. Don't do like a friend of mine used to do who fixed TVs. He'd automatically crank the, the rejuvenator up to its highest setting, and oftentimes he'd burn up the tube. So I think we can put this, this back together and send it home. And one of the nice things about GE TVs from the late 70s through the mid 80s is most of them had what they call a mini manual installed in a little compartment on the back cover that gives you basic service information and a schematic diagram. You know, try finding a piece of consumer electronics made today with that information tucked in the back. Of course, most of the time the manual usually turned up missing the first time the set hit a repair shop somewhere. Okay, we're all back together and we have a copy of the 1987 setup chart which should cover basically any tube you'd need for vintage TV work. And here's a schematic and parts list. We do not have the operating instructions, but I'm sure that information could be obtained online somewhere. We have a wide assortment of adapters here. We have a high voltage probe and a focus voltage probe for testing the high voltage in TV sets. And if you're going to get into vintage TVs, I highly recommend at least getting a CRT tester of some type that will test color and black and white tubes so you can test the condition of the picture tube before you proceed with the restoration. I know in ages ago I've gone to the trouble to get a chassis going only to discover that the CRT was shot and I don't like that so when I get a TV in the first thing I do is check the CRT and then we go from there. Okay there you go thanks for watching and more to come later.